All right, so we got to talk about Anthropic. We got to talk about Claude Code and the newest thing they released, Claude Cowork. It's important to understand that we're beginning to hear stories out of Anthropic that would have been considered science fiction not that long ago. First and foremost, Claude Cowork was shipped in 10 days. It's rapidly becoming this legendary anecdote in Silicon Valley because it's showing in actuality, like in real time, how everything is changing, how software is changing, how business is changing, creating products, startups, everything. So at this point, you probably heard from the creator of Cloud Code, Boris Chorney. So he was saying that at this point, most of the code, most of the additions to Cloud Code are generated by Cloud Code. It's funny, somebody on Twitter mentioned, like, how is this not recursive self-improvement? Like, why isn't this a recursive self-improvement? It certainly seems like it. And AI safety memes, kind of a funny account to follow. They do great reporting. They kind of point out all the times where people sort of discount what's happening. So it, it answered sort of like sarcastically. Oh, you know, to be called recursive self-improvement, it has to come from the recursive region of France or whatever. Point being is this would have been called recursive self-improvement by, by anybody if we, we've heard it, you know, 5, 10, 20 years ago. But now we have all these asterisks and like, no, it's, it's not. But here's why all of that is about to change. So here's what happened. If you haven't used Claude code, you might not be aware of just how crazy it is, of how, how useful it is for building whatever software you want. So here's why. Claude code was developed by developers for developers. Right, it was made to write code. But something weird started happening. So Boris Chorney, he noticed it. He's the creator, again, of Claude Code. So he started noticing something weird. Here's what he said. Since we launched Claude Code, we saw people using it for all sorts of non-coding work, conducting vacation research, creating slide presentations, organizing emails, canceling subscriptions, retrieving wedding photos from hard drives, tracking plant growth, and controlling ovens. There's even this anecdote where somebody, I guess, had tons of pictures from, I guess this is the, their wedding that they're talking about here. They're named like 1.bmg, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And it was just like a whole collection of it. Or had some random name of the camera sort of randomly assigned to, or not randomly, but, you know, you had a long string of numbers and digits. That was what the photo was named. So they used the cloud code to go through that massive catalog of images and name them and organize them based on who was in the picture. Now think about that. That would have taken hours for somebody to do, depending on how many pictures were in there. There probably is some software for, for doing that. If you're doing it in like Google Photos or something like that, it slowly starts over time recognizing who you are, categorizing it, but that's Google, right? There might be some other startups doing it. This is different. This is, you You open up a program and you you tell it. You just tell it, here's what I want you to do. And in fact, I think a couple of days ago, we were talking about how, you know, the cloud code, it's kind of a developer interface, command line interface, might be a turnoff for a lot of people that are just not familiar in, in working with that. I think that was like four days ago. Here's what was happening behind the scenes. So 10 days after they noticed that this was being used, you know, off a label, right? Not for coding, but for everything, everything else. They did a 10 day sprint and released Claude Cowork because obviously Claude Code was great for coding, but it was never just about coding. It's about giving you like almost a like digital employee, an AI employee. It's about giving its agency automation, giving it the ability to finish tasks. In the last day or two, I had five different ideas for little pieces of software that I needed specifically kind of, you know, handcrafted artisanal software that I needed for very specific things that, that I was going to use it for. I opened up several terminal windows and I kind of just gave different versions of cloud code the task and it started working on it. It did most of them very well. Two of those projects that I did as I began using it, I was like, whoa, this is like extremely powerful and will actually change how I do work. Basically what it does is it takes some video out there on the internet, whatever you give it, it downloads it, it uses Gemini 3.0 to kind of go through it, parse it, understand what it's about, then figure out the, the best parts, kind of the clips, and you can kind of tell it what sort of time range you want to do it in, like 30 seconds to 90 seconds or whatever. So it does that, it breaks up the video into clips, it writes out a little description, a title, it adds the subtitles. And in the beginning, the first time kind of Cloud Code created this, I tried it, it, it wasn't too good. Like the clips that it was selecting was kind of weird. They weren't that interesting. I think it was kind of missing the point of like what's interesting. 
And I realized that Cloud Code decided to use, I think, one of the older models, one of the older Flash models, like Gemini 2.5 Flash. So I decided to use Gemini 3.0 and immediately it changed. Now the clips that I was choosing were phenomenal. That will save me hours and hours and hours of work moving forward. And that piece of software will only get better as the AI models that are driving it get better. And as you've probably seen, people are building absolutely incredible stuff with Cloud Code. And now it's available, you know, for normies, for everybody. Or for the time being, it's only in the desktop app on iOS, right? But it's, it's coming to everybody very soon. By everybody, I mean, you don't have to know how to code. You don't need to know how to use the command line interface. You can just point it at some folder that's on your computer and it will get to work. So I was messing around with it for the last couple of days. One of the projects I gave it was basically go online, do the following research. It said, oh, you know what I need is actually Claude code for Chrome. And it said, okay, can you install the plugin Claude for Chrome? That allows it to surf the websites, look at different stuff. So I did. And so now Claude Cowork used Claude for Chrome. You know, they kind of uh, co-worked together, I guess, to, to finish that project. And this, I think, is where everything changes for two reasons. Two kind of thresholds have been met. So basically the idea that now everyone can complete these little projects, not by doing themselves, but by asking an AI assistant to do it. They can take their pile of receipts and turn it into a well-organized expense report. If you have some crazy file folder with downloads or a bunch of random stuff that's in there, have Cloud Code go through it line by line, renaming everything however you want to, organizing everything, maybe even deleting some, some stuff, basically intelligently organizing that thing for you. You have a bunch of notes here and there scattered about, have it go take a look at it, put it together into one comprehensive report. You have a bunch of meeting minutes, take all of them and create a beautiful PowerPoint report with multiple pages that kind of summarizes and goes over everything. Somebody at Anthropic apparently used it to control their oven which I don't know exactly what they mean by that, but you can imagine a lot of possibilities. Like, let's say you put a little camera outside of there, have Claude code every once in a while, kind of look at what's going on and maybe, okay, when, when it's browning on top where it looks like it's cooked, you know, maybe turn it down to a lower thing, run it for 10 minutes, then turn it off. Whatever. The point is you have something that's intelligent that can automate a lot of these tasks for you. By the way, big shout out to aitoolsreview.co.uk slash insight slash what is Claude Cowork. A lot of this information I'm getting from their article that they've written. I'll post a link down below. But here's why things change. Number one, we just got to the point where you can give something to an AI, like an entire project, and they're going to come back with the completed project. No longer do you need to learn a whole new set of skills in order to kind of babysit it along the way. Because a lot of this is about offloading cognition onto the AI, giving it cognitive tasks and offloading it out of your own brain, just handing it over and then having it do it. Think about how big of a deal that is. Because if you have to do it yourself, you're kind of expending your mental energy points, whatever that is, however many you have a day, right? I mean, there's a limited amount of like hard work that you can do every 24 hours, let's say. And some days you have more, some days you have less, but, but it's a finite supply. Now, let's say you have a chat bot of old, you can offload some of it, like it'll help, it'll process some of it, but you're still monitoring it. You're still babysitting it. You still have to kind of like go back and forth, like the, the cyborg approach. This, what we're seeing here is a truly agentic. To be fair, if clock code, you still have to every once in a while hit yes, continue, but those are safety measures. They're important safety measures and there are ways of turning it off. If you're supposed to, you know, launch it at dangerous without permissions mode. But the point is it will finish the task that you gave it no matter how long it runs. But the point is it will finish the task you gave it the entire project. It'll come back with it finished. Today, I had kind of an idea for a mobile app that's, uh, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you. It might be my billion dollar idea. Actually, I'm pretty sure I've talked about it before. It's it's kind of like a to-do list, like a habit slash to-do app with one of those idle games built in with a whole progression system. Those tend to be pretty addicting. You kind of want to see how your little character factory or whatever it is, how it's progressing over days. Most of the progress is offline. You just come in there once in a while to tweak things. Combine that with a to-do list and that's really kind of gamifying a, a to-do list and just getting stuff done. Habitica is a great example of kind of what I'm looking for, but this is, this is different. Today I asked Claude Code how to build it. First I said it to kind of plan it out. It recommended I use React Native for the front end, back end of Python some sort of SQL database for the database. I didn't really need to know any of it. 
Now, of course, if I plan to launch the app, I would probably at this point, you know, especially for cybersecurity, keeping everybody's data safe, et cetera, you probably need an engineer to go in there, kind of make sure things are good. Because these Vibe coded apps, some of them have been hacked, data lost, so you gotta be careful. But I can go from zero to, to one, right, to my first prototype, get my first user, et cetera. I can go, I can do that easily. In this case, I did it in one day. It created a fully functional app, at least like the, the bare bones. At this point, it's all about adding more stuff, testing it, and kind of iterating on it. But in terms of that idea of cognitive offload, what it's possible for me to do now is like, let's say I have an app idea. I don't have to break stride on whatever it is that I was doing at that time. Because at the time I was playing our creators, I, I had an off day, give me a break. So I'm playing our creators, whatever, sue me. And then I have this idea, right? So I pop open a terminal on my other monitor. I boot up Claude code and I asked, how would you do this? And it writes out like pages and pages. It, it really thought through a lot of the different stuff. And this, this is how it would do it. This is the technical specs. And then I said, okay, build it, make it so number one. And it started cooking and I went back to my game of Arc Raiders. I don't recall how long exactly that first portion ran for, but it was, I mean, it was, it was quite a while. Then there were some issues with rendering in the browser. It kept, kept getting some error messages. We troubleshooted those back and forth a couple of times and now everything works. So we're really at a time where we're able to, if we have some idea or some project, we're able to just hand it off to be completed. And this is why AI is going to be such a killer app in business, if you will, is because, you know, as an example, Anthropic completed Claude co-work in 10 days. The old school ways of running business, it's not going to fly anymore. Very, very soon, you're not going to be able to take six months to, to slowly put together an idea, form a committee, have everybody vote on it, document everything. It's just like all the slow corporate processes, even in the startup, sometimes they, they tend to move pretty slow just because of the number of people that are involved. It's completely different. Cloud co-work was shipped in 10 days. If somebody put a gun to my head and said, hey, release this app in a kind of like a good enough form within the next 24 hours. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I could. 24 to 40 hours, I can probably put something out there that's pretty decent. Like if I could just work that entire time, for sure. So that means that speed has been increased massively. The amount of kind of cognitive labor that is required to create things like this has dropped massively. And now with Claude Cowork, that's available for a lot of other people for whom this might be their first interaction with agentic systems like this. Because if you think about it at this point, some portion of the population, still not huge, but it's some portion of the population that likely have tried one of the chatbots. You know, whether it's Grok, Gemini, ChatGPT, Claude. Well, Claude is probably in terms of like regular users, isn't the most popular out there. But boy, are they dominating with this Claude code thing. Just today, Elon Musk was talking about the next iteration of Grok, Grok 4.20. And by all accounts, it's going to be pretty amazing. But here's the thing. When somebody on X asked Elon Musk if Grok 4.20 is going to be better than Claude code, he said, probably not a leap above Claude, Claude code. And he said, Anthropic really created something special. So Anthropic is really creating some incredible stuff with a much smaller budget than a lot of the other Frontier Labs. Now they have their partnership with Google. They're using TPUs to train the models. But the way that they've been cooking has been absolutely incredible. I got to credit this idea to Dave Shapiro. I believe he called it the automation cliff. And the idea is this. Let's say you have some system of automation that you're trying to install. And you start adding things into place, right? And you kind of go from 0% complete to 100% to complete. Well, between 0 and 99% complete, the effect isn't massive. But when you put that very last piece in and click, the entire thing gets automated. Well, it's in that moment where it just, where the effect really gets ramped up quickly because now that it's automated, whatever the widget that you're trying to produce, it's going to start rolling off the conveyor belt one by one by one by one, 24 hours a day, forever. And I think we're going to see that effect right now with Claude at Cowork. So people at Anthropic, they're saying that a lot of the employees there have multiple instances of Claude code working. So they might have four 
each one working on a separate project. So each human employee has their AI employees, three or four or five or six. Technically, there's no limit. It just how are, how are much you can kind of keep in your sort of short-term memory and remember what they're doing, et cetera. By the way, again, at some point, either you have an AI manager managing them that that might be getting at at some point, or they themselves will become a lot more automated. Because a lot of the interactions that I have to have, they do feel like they're easily automated. They're there for safety, you know, in order to make sure that the cloud code doesn't do something naughty and, you know, delete all of your files on your computer or to protect it from prompt injections, et cetera. But those aren't sort of capability failures or, or limits. They're just there for safety as we kind of iron out a lot of the kinks, et cetera. It will literally get to the point, I think, where you just type out the entire project that you want completed. And then this thing goes away for, you know, a few hours or days or weeks, eventually maybe longer. And it comes back to you with the completed project. So Lee Robinson, who is at Cursor, he kind of strung a bunch of agents. I believe he used GPT 5.2. So he put a lot of them together. And in under a week, it built a browser from scratch. So this is three plus million lines of code, thousands of files. It ran uninterrupted for one week. So we're moving from the era where you have to kind of ping pong with these models. You kind of go back and forth and you're kind of using it like a tool to develop stuff and you're adding it to whatever project you're trying to build. So now it finishes the project, it hands you the project folder, and it's like done. This obviously is going to put a lot of pressure on Microsoft Copilot, and in fact, a lot of other startups and a lot of other big companies. As of right now, Anthropic has Claude doing exceptional work with, with spreadsheets, with navigating the web with Claude for Chrome. Claude Code is incredible for developers, and now Claude Cowork is going to start changing how we do things on the computer. I think this is going to wake a lot of people up. The idea of this drop-in replacement to remote worker, it's very, very close. And I think that like regular people are about to start seeing that. They will start experiencing that. So if you ever wanted to build something, right now is a phenomenal time to do so. I think Sam Altman said something like, if you're not using one of, you know, opening eyes products, if you're not using this every day, you're falling behind or you're not going to make it or something like that. This is kind of true. You got to start using AI, cloud code or cloud work. If you have access to it, something. I feel like there's going to be this period of time while the early adopters like just zoom to the moon while everybody else slowly catches up and you definitely don't want to be one of the slow movers on this one. If you have an iOS device, so it's desktop, so MacBook or one of the desktops, I was a little bit confused about what they meant. So it's not an app from the app store. You actually have to go to Anthropic website to download the thing, run it, then log into your account, connect Claude for Chrome. If, if you want to browse the web and do stuff like that, you kind of designate a folder for Claude Cowork to work in and just give it some stuff to do. Start kind of having it process some documents, put some stuff together, start getting familiarized with it because I think Claude Code and Claude Cowork are our first two examples of these uh, truly agentic systems, or at least they're beginning to be agentic. I, I think this is kind of we're, we're kind of crossing that line because we had chatbots, then we had the pro versions where we could go off, search the web, bring back a report. And then this is like the next step forward. And it's a big one. Anyways, let me know what you think. Do you have any intuitions about what Anthropic is doing that puts it so far ahead of everybody else? Is it the sole document that they gave Claude? How is it possible that seemingly they're using 10x less resources to achieve significantly more than everyone else. Let me know in the comments and uh, yeah, stay frosty. My name is Wes Roth and I'll see you in the next one.